Right, uh, here we are again looking at uh, the Welsh Pony. Um, as you can see, we've now pretty well completely dismantled the locomotive. Uh, here's the original frames and uh, cylinders behind me. All the other components have been removed um, and we've been having a good look at these frames and cylinders and basically concluded that uh, we need to replace them. Um, the cylinders have a lot of uh, corrosion damage down here and some cracking in some of the corners so uh, we've decided to replace the cylinders luckily we've got a set of the original patterns available to to make new from right we're looking at uh, looking at the frames and cylinders here you can see that the the frame plate carried through a slot in the cylinder casting in this area here um, the top of the frame should be about here where my end of my finger is but uh, it's been eaten away down to there and it's also been eaten away at the side um, and also you can imagine that now trying to separate these cylinder castings from these frames uh, without causing a lot of further damage would be extremely difficult um, which is why we've uh, decided to replace them you can you can see here some of the uh, damage to the frame plates where the wheels have actually been cutting into the frames over the years and actually taken uh, quite a percentage of the thickness of the material away, particularly here. Um, and uh, putting that material back onto original frames would be very difficult indeed. Um, ironically, just here you can see some of the where the wheels haven't been touching. You can see some of the original machining marks from. Uh, when these plates would have been made in uh, the 1890s. As we can uh, get laser cut ground steel frame plates to the original drawing for, um, well, less than 600 pounds per side, uh, it's actually made sense just to uh, replace the frames. And uh, as I say, we're working now to uh, restore the patterns to have new cylinders and steam chest cast. So some of the parts you can see here behind me, um, they probably uh, are original Victorian patterns used here at Boston Lodge um, many years ago. But uh, more recently, they've been we know where they've been used for new cylinders for the Prince in 1961, and also for the Palmerston in 1986 um, so uh, anyway now we're we've got all these pattern parts out of the storage container and uh, they're being checked over cleaned up uh, and little bits of damage repaired so that they can go off to a, a foundry and we'll have some new iron castings uh, to come back here to Boston Lodge to be machined to replace what we've got. Um, Donald uh, is our volunteer pack maker and he's, uh, he's doing this work for us at the moment. We have uh, a Victorian era drawing um, which is uh, Labelled as for Palmerston, but also a note here says Welsh Pony. Um, so we know that's that's appropriate. Uh, and also we have a, a more modern drawing from the 1960s uh, use of these patterns. Um, and obviously Donald is having to do quite a bit of work on the patterns to uh, make them suitable to use again but uh, it's a lot less work than if we were had to be able to start constructing uh, patterns from scratch and uh, having Donald available to uh, to sort them out for us again would have uh, cost an awful lot of money uh, so we're very lucky in that respect Right, this is uh, Welsh Pony's tank. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the restoration of this bit is now pretty much complete. Um, we had to renew various lower parts. The the plate work down 
the sides inside and out has been renewed because that was rotted away but most of the top of the tank uh, is original um, tidied up um, the uh, the new pieces have been riveted in the bottom uh, similar to the original construction um, and we were able to say things like the uh, this pipe here which runs right away through the tank that's a brass pipe which uh, carries the blower pipe for the loco within it um, and actually that brass pipe was not too bad it had new ends put on it and uh, it's gone back in again um, these two flanges here are the uh, they'll be the takeoffs for the uh, water to the injectors so we're looking at the the back of the tank here this um, nice little brass flange here um, can be taken off and allows access to the mesh uh, that cover the bottom of the the dip pipes where water is sucked up um, into the injectors from the tank so any um, leaves and the debris that might find their way into the tank would collect in this area so this brass uh, this brass cover can be taken off to allow you to clean it all out easily without trying to get inside the tank which is obviously quite difficult the other um, original feature that uh, we found remains of on this tank was the uh, water level gauge um, the holes here and here are where it mounted and basically there was a uh, presumably a glass tube in some brass fittings that came right up here inside the cab that basically displayed the water level in the tank to the to the firemen. Um, the brass fittings we've got and they're being uh, restored so we'll be able to put this f original feature back on the loco which uh, the other England engines have, have now lost so that's something that's a, a little bit of history that we can put back here we've got uh, a lot of the components we've removed from Welsh Pony in the stripping process um, and we've got most of the mechanical components here from the engine the, uh, the side rods, coupling and connecting rods, uh, some axle boxes, cylinder front cover, uh, sorry, steam chest cover, cylinder cover um, we've got some of the, the horn blocks that the axle boxes uh, working there's uh, pistons and rods um, some of the uh, brackets that support the tanks off the frames the motion brackets there which uh, carry the slide bars springs uh, cross heads uh, the rear cylinder covers there and then further back we've got some uh, brake gear we see the sand pots that sit in front of the tanks um, some bits of foot plating um, along the back here we've got the uh, the outer frames which uh, carry the the sides of the cab and the tanks um, going forward to the front buffer beam um, we've got a blast pipe and main steam pipe um, and uh, some glands there and uh, valve gear parts here there's the valve gear way shaft and um, some of the lifting links there on oh, no, an expansion link down there um, a lot of these mechanical parts uh, we should be able to use again no problem will be next stage on these parts is to clean them all up look for any cracks and damage um, but uh, we're hopeful that for the most part these uh, these will all be uh, able to be used again um, you can see also over there we've got the uh, the reverser for the loco uh, again that should be just a matter of cleaning it up and uh, looking for any obvious damage and then uh, that can be refitted and used again right so uh, here we've got the wheel sets from the loco um, we haven't uh, fully analyzed these yet they need uh, cleaning down further and uh, we need to look for cracks and things but uh, at the first look they seem to be uh, in reasonable condition um, certainly the the eccentrics here which uh, these are items that 
actually dry the valve gear. Um, they appear to be very good indeed, very little wear on them. Um, and uh, probably with a good clean up and some new uh, trimmings for the oilways, uh, they'll be able to be used again. Um, the uh, the tyres, so we need to have a, a look at to see, make sure there's no cracks or anything in there. But uh, judging by the thickness of material, there's a, there's a lot of life there, and hopefully they'll be in in good condition. Similarly, with the uh, the wheel centres. Right, there's his uh, Welsh Ponies boiler. As you can see, we've now separated it away from the frames and all the other bits and pieces. Um, we've done. Uh, some assessment work on it to see if it was possibly reusable but uh, we've concluded that really it's not uh, it's not possible to um, to reuse any of it uh, we've found uh, some thinning and wastage at the bottom of the barrel uh, down here where the seams join and down here as well at the front tube plate um, so we've uh, basically concluded that the best course of action is going to be to build a completely new boiler um, but with all the external dimensions absolutely matching what we've got here so that uh, we can put the locomotive back together and you wouldn't be able to tell that it's got a new boiler unless you start looking very carefully uh, so we'll keep the loco's original appearance um, the new boiler will probably be uh, welded external construction uh, but with a, a riveted foundation ring which is uh, down here probably as, as the original there uh, a steel in a firebox rather than a copper one um, but as I say all the, all the external dimensions will be much as, uh, as you see here the work on the boiler will be to complete the detailed design of the the replacement boiler um, and then uh, that will need to go to our uh, engineering insurance company Royal Sun Alliance for approval um, once we've got that we will uh, we'll be able to start constructing the new boiler here at Boston Launch um, we'll be buying in uh, things like the barrel will be rolled outside and the throat plate which is a formed plate that will be bought in uh, but all the uh, welding will be done here and the fitting the stays the tubes all that will be done here um, and, uh, and then the old boiler uh, will probably become a, a museum exhibit as it's a, a good example of a an early 1900s typical boiler um, so hopefully when we have uh, a museum space it might uh, might go in there so uh, this is the uh, boiler for the Lilla which we built a few years ago uh, the Lilla is having a major overhaul at the moment so which is why the boiler is out of the frames again and bare um, but this boiler is uh, very similarly sized to the Welsh Ponies boiler and uh, this is what we, we built here at Boston Lodge uh, and this one's all welded. So the Welsh Ponies new boiler will be very similar to this but uh, as I mentioned before we'll uh, have a riveted foundation ring here and uh, screwed stays but uh, otherwise the construction will be very similar to this, to this boiler here. Okay so uh, we've looked at most of the uh, components of Welsh Pony now. Um, but uh, there's one obvious missing uh, item, which is the which is the tender, which we we haven't got at all. Um, however, we do have uh, several original drawings that uh, give us all the correct dimensions for the tender, um, and uh, shortly we'll be starting some design work, uh, probably for a, a new steel underframe for, for this tender uh, and then uh, we'll be looking at the original designs for the upper bodywork with the, the flare on the sides so we can make basically construct a complete new tender that's uh, a proper replica of uh, one of the original uh, tenders that were built for the England engines. <laughs>